Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain how to integrate your own machine learning code to SageMaker. I wrote this little uh, GitHub notebook that explains everything and goes like step by step. There is like all the code that you need to do that with an example on Cypher. So we get started and the first step is to create an EC2 instance. So you don't have to create your own EC2 instance. You can just do it from your computer, but I'm going to show that anyways in the sake of completeness. So to create your own EC2 instance, in simple, you type EC2 here in on the, the AWS uh, web interface. You go to EC2 and then you have this launch instance button. You click that launch instance we call it uh, sage maker test or set let's call it sage maker cypher i'm going to pick ubuntu 22 that's good i'm going to uh, choose an instance type that has a, G a gpu so that's going to be um so I can I can check that online GPU instance EC2 AWS I don't remember it by heart so it's Amazon EC2 instance types here I go to accelerate computing for that's the one that will have GPUs and I just know you can check it like if you Google it you can check it but that instance that's one of the cheapest that has a GPU and it's kind of working relatively uh, fast. So I'm just going to pick that one uh, here and it's staying, you know, like $37 uh, cents per hour. Here I'm just going to reuse something that I've already set, but this is so that you can SSH into the instance. If you don't, you just go through the step of creating a new pair. Uh, this we can leave as it is. Here I'll just put like 25 gigabytes, so that should be enough space to do what we want. And then just launch instance. And we have to wait a little bit. Um, we go back here. And now we have this instance here that's um, pending. So you have to wait a little bit and it's not going to be, okay, uh, light, it's going to be showing running. Sometimes, like if you stop it, you have to actualize the page so that this shows the status update. But here, working. So as soon as this is working, you could just SSH, um, you know, that IP, and that would work. But I'm going to show you how to do um, elastic IPs because that IP can actually change. So if you don't, if you want to have always the same IP, like you set it up in. Uh, VS code or whatever, it's better to have a fixed IP. So what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm going to go into Elastic IPs. You can have most by default have five IPs. So I'm going to um, release that address. So you first have to deassociate it. If you try to release it before, it won't work. And then release. And I'm going to create a new Elastic IP address. So I just do it like this, allocate. I'm going to give it a name, Sage Maker Cypher. And I'm going to associate that address to the instance I just created, which is uh, Sage Maker Cypher. Associate. And here we go. So now I should be able to SSH this address and should also show up in my instances. Uh, so that's the one that's the one we're working on. Should also show up here. There is a little time, you know, so a little time to you know, adjust. Uh, but yeah, now you see it appear here. So if I start a terminal. I should just be able to SSH into that. Yes. And here I am. 
So now we have the EC2 instance launch. We can continue the next steps. One of the first thing I'm going to do actually is set up another thing, which is fish shell. So just follow those, you know, commands. Then you can install fish easily on your machine. And I mean on the, on the EC2 instance. This is my little window for the EC2 instance. So that's that should be the first line should be pretty fast. The second one is going to take a little while. And the last one should be pretty fast. So you can you can make a break in the after the second line. Say press enter. Okay, there we go. Now it's the fish, yes. Okay, and now you can just type fish and you have fish, which is like a better, I like it over bash. It's another shell. It allows you to go through histories and things like that very easily. So here we are. Okay, so next stage is to install. I'm saying here, you can install SageMaker. You could do this actually at any time. Um, you need to install pip first. You will have to install it for the other libraries as well. So may as well do that now. And then we'll install the CLI of AWS. Okay. We can run that command. While doing that, we can go, oops, so we need to complete a bit here. Yeah, you just follow the steps, you know. So we are on Linux. Just follow those steps. Just follow the doc and you will be good. And zip and zip is not installed by default, so you can just install it like this. And zip, and then we'll install like this. So this is just to you know check whether it's working. Seems to be working, and need to write AWS configure to set up your your um. everything so here i'm going to mask that for you guys because that's my my private stuff uh, but you need to to get your keys you get that information from um, your account in aws here i'm saying You should put the right region. You can change that later if you want. So that's not a big deal if you don't have the right one. And this can be as is. So now we have we have set up the key so we can move forward. Now we're moving to the step of installing uh, Docker, which is always a little bit annoying because it never works immediately. So let me do it with you guys. Um, and uh, yes, so you first have to do this. We did something like that already, but you know. So I'm always having problems here. Just going to try to do everything. on my own and I would write into troubles and and then I will solve them with you. And so that you can see how this goes.
Okay, not too many troubles. It's always a little bit suspicious. Okay. So let's go smoother than, than many of the other times. So if you just follow, basically if you follow this page, it should be working pretty well. And yeah, so all of this, oh yeah, so that you can run, you need to do this. So now we, we don't have this, but you need to do this so that you don't, Otherwise, you run into errors later. You you need to make it so that it's not um, you don't need to write sudo every time to write it to launch the Docker um, commands. Otherwise, your the SageMaker things are not going to work. So. You, um, yeah, and the username, I forgot to mention that earlier, but it's Ubuntu. Like, if you do a C2 instance, the username, username by default is Ubuntu. You saw that when I was associating. Okay, and then log back out, log in and out. So, that's it. You see, you are Ubuntu. Yeah. And go back to fish. fish and we're good this is only if you need if you already have docker installed and you have something that's a bit um you know messy with your um, history existing container or stuff like that this kind of clears everything so the next step is to extend the container so at this stage uh until now we didn't really need to you know do anything in terms of in using the material in the code of that repository. Now we'll have to do that. So you need to clone that repository. Um, I didn't, I, I create, I just created that instance. So I, I cannot just clone it like that. I have to add my key. So I think the command is this. It's going to create my key. Then I can, um, I can, I need to copy the public key into my GitHub repository. So here we go. So that key I need to, to add to my GitHub account. So if I go to my profile, and that's here, uh, settings, sorry. Settings, <clears throat> then I go to SH and GPG keys, new key. I paste that key that I just copied and I will say that it's SageMaker Cypher. Here we go, and I'm going to go in it. And now what I'm saying here is that step three, extend an official SageMaker TensorFlow container. We need to go to that folder, extend tf28, and we need to run this create container. But before that, we're going to modify that file because uh, we're going to change that. So this you, you need to create your own file name. You could you could just keep it like this. I'm going to change it because I already created those to you know test my code. So I, I have to change that. Uh, but you could you could like keep everything as, as it is. So I'm just going to call it SageMaker Extend Two, and then that should work. And that's and that's going to take quite some time. So what you need to do before uh, actually I do that is that you need to um, you need to um, in this like requirement you need to have your the modules that you're going to use for your program I, you can you could add them later but i advise you to add them now so this is the python packages you need 
so I just need those, you know. Um, but yeah, add them here, and it's going to be automatically integrate your container. And right now we are not adding code. We are just setting up the um, the packages and everything. So you see, I was telling you not 2.8 but 2.11. It's going to override it. Uh, but that container is already going to have CUDA and everything. So this is just to install your packages, okay? Your code will add it in step four. Uh, and this will only, this step will only do once. And if we need to change the code for whatever reason, we'll change that and we'll create a new container with updated code. Uh, but we don't want to reinstall everything every time. That's why I advise to separate it into two steps, the container creation uh, pipeline. So now we're just installing the libraries. So you can install, you know, add whatever library you want to that and it's going to uh, be taken care of. Uh, yeah, so when that's done, I just, as I was saying, you can just do um, create container. And for this, you have to wait a little while because it's going to need to install everything. Um, and then I will show you how to test that. Okay, I am back. The instance was finished to push. You see it took a bit more than uh, 10 minutes. And now we can go on to the next step. Actually, the next step is to uh, test that that works well. And the easiest way to do that is to run that command. Here you see it's runtime NVIDIA, which means that you could use the GPU. So just going to do that and, um, you know, uh, it doesn't work because we didn't install everything with Docker. <laughs> so uh, let's go back here. Uh, maybe it's because we didn't install this one. I'm not sure. Let's try that again. No. Uh, well, actually, let's try the other one because maybe we don't have to do the NV. So this one should work even if you don't have a GPU. It's just like, yes, so this, one, this works. So just run that. This one is for the GPU, but here we don't really need to do that. Okay, so let's continue. I was saying that um, you can, now we have to do this next step, which is adding the code to the container. To do that, we need to go to uh, the folder adding code. And here we have the create container.sh as earlier. Uh, and the code is going to be in that container folder. I'm going to show you that. Here in code, cipher network there's post proc and pre proc but this is just some additional things that are part of this you know little sub repository uh, but we are not going to cover this right now uh, oops network segmentation basis and here we're going to have the train.py and it, your file should be named train.py that's that's going to be by default the entry point of your script and you know let me even um Open another window here. Here we go. Up here and um, adding code as container and Docker file. So you see in this Docker file we have uh, the only it's, it's basically Oh, so we should change it, by the way, also, because now, you know, it's SageMaker Extend 2. So we should change that. So let's let's go ahead and do that first, you know. Uh, so, yeah, there is a shortcut in Vim to go to the end of the line, but for what it is. Okay, so that's good. And then... Then... You want to have the script that's called train.py here. It should be in that folder in your uh, container. It should be directly in the code folder. If you don't, it's going to complain. 
So whatever your script, like it doesn't matter or else it's organized, just that the train.py, it should be in the code in OPT ML code in your container. That's, that's crucial. Uh, yeah. So here I'm just copying all that content there. Um, okay. Let's go back here. Now I want to show you, uh, see what's, that's what I was saying here. I want to show you, um, actually here. I want to show, you know, like there's some little technicalities with the environment variables, uh, that I kind of cover here. And I also speak about it in the next section when I speak about run in local mode. I, I give a little bit more explanation on that, but let me, let me cover that right now. Uh, so that it's, it's clear for everyone. Yes. So let me, let me, uh, you know, go to this script. So basically here I get this, I, I have two paths. I have one path to get my data sets. So that, that I call data set path. Here I save that as, you know, uh, H5 file. But it could be anything. Maybe it, it could be a CSV that's telling you where to, uh, where to look for like image files or whatever, you know, like it doesn't really, like, you can just change that all you want. There is some, there is one, one specific requirement I'm going to go over though. Uh, and my other path is where I save my network. And here it is this. So this environment variable SM channel training and SM model here, that's SageMaker environment variables. And you're going to define them in another script. It's a separate Python script that you use to launch uh, your SageMaker jobs. So let me go up here. So we are here, you know, in, in this folder. And there is the run local. So I'm going to go there. And in that subfolder, there is a script. So train.py is just an empty script, so you can forget about it. The important thing for script is the run sagemaker.py. And that's the important bit. So I'm going to go over that in the next section, but what you need to see here is um, this path here. You see, that's a local path. So if I, you know, if I open another window, um, yeah, and you see, I have this, this path here in my, uh, so it's data. So that's why I have my data. So this is to run it locally, but if I go into that folder too, and I'll show you the path, you see that's, that's the same path as I have here. Okay. Same path. And here I have this file that here, that I set for training risk level 5.h5. This is that file. So what's happening when I do that command fit is that SageMaker is going to copy all the contents of that folder into uh, the, the the path that's specified by that environment variable, okay, and the and that's that's by default always the same unless you change it, and it is that folder, opt ml input train. So all the content of that file. So you know if I if I go back here, here so you can see everything. All the content of, you know, that file that I define here, which in my example corresponds to all this data is going to be copied in my container to this OPT ML input train. Uh, when I run the SageMaker job and I call this dot fit command. Okay. That's, that's what happens. And then in my Python script, in my train script, then in my code, that's, that's on the Docker that I'm the step I'm creating now. This is going to be this opt ml input train is going to be the value of that variable. So if I if I want to access my data set, the path then becomes that path because my and, and in that folder here, I could access the 
three, four, I could access also this image or whatever is in that folder. Okay. Uh, and that's, that's all there is to it really. And it's the same for, you know, output path. It's going to be that folder. And here it's going to be the lo locally. So it's going to be, you know, here test local outputs. And, and that's corresponding to, to this, you know, output model DR. It's going to be wrapped in that. So whatever you save, it's going to automatically save like logs and your model and everything in that place here. So that if you want to use it later, you, that's why you need to, to go look for it. So, you know, uh, tests local one, you see, I have model tar. I already ran that. Okay. So I will show you later, but I already ran that. And that's, that's the output model and output so like logs and things like that. But yeah, basically, like it's a bit confusing. The paths um, took me a little while to, you know, figure this out. Uh, but that's all I explained just now. Okay, so uh, all of this kind of has to match, and that's all there is to it. You know, like that's the rest of your script. It can be exactly the same. Right now, all what you have to remember is that you just have to set those paths correctly and basically your input path and your output path, and you're going to be good. Um, yes. So uh, I will go back. Let me you know, reduce those so that it's less confusing for you. And go back, go back, go back. Okay. So let's just check, you know, CD container, Docker file, extend to, that's right, this has to match with, you know, what I was saying earlier. And I'm also going to change that script because I have training example. If I try to, if you, tr if you make several attempts, you need to update that. Uh, otherwise it's going to complain that's already existing and everything. So it's just, just to create a new, a new, uh, container and, uh, delete the old ones. And you have to delete the old container. So I can show you, I can show you. Uh, if you go, so to, to check all your containers, you just go to the web app. You could type ECR. It's going to tell you elastic container and registry. You go there and it's going to give you a list of all your existing containers. See, I have, I've done uh, like a few, you know, experiments and I'm going to delete those like very soon because uh, it, it doesn't cut that much, but it does cut a little bit. Uh, depending on the size of the container, just having it here. So if you have a container that you don't use, you should just delete it here. Okay. So you select it and, uh, and, um, and uh, delete. Okay. So you just do that. Uh, otherwise you're going to incur some cost if you don't use it. I have the code on the container and data somewhere else. Right now it's just locally. But afterwards, I will explain uh, that actually data should be on S3 if you want to do everything on the cloud. You should not put your data in the container uh, because the, the storage price for container is much higher than other types of storage price, okay? So it's always better to put your, con your data elsewhere, like either locally or in the S3 container. Otherwise, it's going to be much more expensive. It's not meant to be done that way. It's not meant that you put your data in the container. Okay. That's why it has all this path. It's coping in the, in the ML train and the, like, you know, this ML input train. That's why everything is happening like that because basically you don't want to pay for like the high storage price of the container. Container should only contain your code. Um, so here we go. Uh, I think we changed everything. Now we can just run that and that's going to be much faster than earlier. Earlier it lasted about a bit more than 10 minutes to install everything. This should last 
think it's going to last maybe one or two minutes. We can just wait it out. Should be pretty fast. And in the meantime, in the meantime, yeah, so when, when it's done, you can run that command and it should tell you, we will really be able to check that our code is in the right position and everything. Um, yes. So that's what I was explaining, you know, like earlier, if you have problems, you want to change your code or whatever, just delete your container and create a new one, a new name uh, that's going to be much cleaner. And this was what I was just explaining. Now with the cost uh, savings, this is what I was saying, like you should delete and use containers. It's, go, it's going to incur some cost if you don't. Um, yes, the next action is going to be running in local mode. So yeah, I was just saying here that it's better to, you know, try to debug your script locally first. You can use P I Python P um, debugger or just PDB. And that's personally, I think it is easiest. Uh, yes. You have to, there's some little, you know, thing with execution roles. I can show that afterwards. Okay, so we pushed the, uh, the container. So now we just need to get the um, your role and you can just type this. It's going to list all your roles. Then you need to update that script, run local with, uh, up. so, need to run that script with your so you need to change a few things so the role i was just showing you should paste it here okay uh, the rest is good the output path you know like you can just use that if you want to use my repository or something else just should be a local path and for local path you have to write the file in front of it file column slash slash and then your path uh, the rest you can keep as the same is you could make several instance points. This has to be local role, you know, is the role you find here. This is going to be, this you need to change, I mean, this you need to change if you change the title and you need to change each time you want to add new code because this is going to be uh, the container you know, we just created, okay? So here we we'll have to change that to 12. Uh, output path is what we defined here and this is fit the content of what folder you want to copy into your container. Uh, so basically where the data is, okay? What I explained just earlier. So we are good with that. And I want to show you something. So the next thing we have to do is just to run, um, run that script, but run SageMaker. If you do that here, it's going to complain that it doesn't have the train.py. So you need to go into that folder that I made for you, because here there is this little train.py file that has actually nothing in it, as you can see. But uh, it, I don't know why it needs to be there. Okay, so then you can run the Python run SageMaker, and that's going to run locally. Okay. Okay, so now it's just you know telling you some some things like this is all the um, this is important because this is all the like Sage uh, SageMaker environment variable. So if you Want to check them? They are all here. So the output here, ML opt ML output. So that's in your container. It's all paths in your container. Uh, opt uh, model. Uh, you know, like what we defined earlier in the train.py script, the, the actual train.py script. That's it's, it's calling environmental variables that you can check here. So that's important. You see, channel training. That's one of the ones we use. Here it is. So you can look into that. So, and then it's just displaying the normal log of my strict. You see, I, I asked to print my model. It's doing that. And then it's just some things to, you know, um, verify my data generator. And then it's just training like any normal uh, script that you have locally. And that's it. You know, you can, you can follow that here. And everything is going to be local. It's going to be saved locally. Uh, so if I do stop like this, you know, I just, oops, I just come back 
and the path I said was test local output so you know there's one here and I think because my job didn't finish it's not going to be there oh no it is it is so it's not showing the same time because I think you know it's UTC and here I'm not UTC so it's showing time in the future uh, I'm in, in the Pacific coast as I'm a bit later but yeah here it is okay it's just working fine the next step is to go to do that um, on the cloud. And to do that on the cloud, uh, we need to change repository, to change directory, sorry. And um, we need to go into this um, run, yeah, this run uh, cloud. And it's exactly the same as earlier, okay, just we'd have to change this script, run SageMaker. There are going to be a few things that are different here. Um, the role is going to be the same, this is going to be the same. Instance type, now instead of being local, you have to choose the instance type that you think is appropriate for your uh, job. So you can, you know, check the documentation online, like here, to, to see what, what is available. So all of those again are actually computing instance type for GPUs for machine learning um, and um, training job as the name of the training job. You shouldn't have like underscores or special characters or things like that. So you can check that online too. If it's telling you an error of the string of name, it's because you have something here that's not authorized. Okay, so you need to make sure that that's correct. Um, and output path is going to be on S3. So that's um, something that I wanted to um, tell you a little bit about. So when you want to do um, to run your code uh, locally, you will have to have input and output path on S3. On S3. You see, that's different, it's on S3, the output path and the data that you want to load, it's going to be also on S3. So what you need to do is, you know, let's say uh, here, my data is in data, see, uh, data two, that's my data, okay? Uh, I need to, I need to uh, run the command like this to copy my data to S3, okay? This is going to copy all the content of that folder into that bucket and that, and that spot. But first you need to create that bucket, okay? To create a bucket, you need to go to S3, See here are all my SageMaker thing. You need to create the bucket. And I already created that bucket. I'm going to do it again. But here it is. And after you after you run that command, you're going to have a folder here, data with the content of your folder. That's where my script here uh, is going to uh, get its data from. S3, you, now, before it was file, now you have to change this prefix to S3 then the name of your bucket and then the, the path to, uh, to to your files okay and that's that has to match what we had earlier you know in um, in our training uh, script okay and same for output now I made a folder here output uh, output sage maker where you go going to have all the results for each job, you know, so then you can just click here, output, and it's going to have little zip files that you can uh, play with, which you can retrieve and, you know, use for whatever next you want to do with your experiments. Okay. And the other thing that's important here is that um, you can track metrics, any metric you want. And one of the ways to do that is to parse your logs so and you're using regex so this is my regex and here i specified like this a dictionary and my name this is this could be anything this i just call it val loss i could call it uh, that's the uh, metric i want to follow it, it doesn't mean it doesn't have to be uh, anything specific it's just for you to like you understand um what that metrics you are using it puts What's going to happen is that it's going to try to find my logs this this string, okay, and it's going to report it as val loss. So now, and you can just run that, and it's going to start the job. 
is going to be copying the data to your container, uploading your container, doing a lot of things. So it's going to be a bit slower to start than the uh, local job. Uh, but the things that you then you can console that anytime you want and it's still going to run in the background you can scale that up easily you, know, you just have to change the number of instances so for example you know if I um, go back here it's going to change like you know you could uh, have several of these instances you know to do um, whatever you want you know um, repeat the experiment several times to compute uh, standard deviation or, or whatever you know or just you know like you have a random initialization of the weight or some some random aspects in your experiment you can change that here uh, if you want to do some sort of hyper parameter tuning job then that's going to be the next section i'm going to explain so uh, hold on you know but here we're just waiting here to see that this is happening. This is going to take approximately, I think, five minutes in my case, it's depending on the size of your data set and things like this. Um, so yeah, you just have to wait, so be a little bit patient here. And it's going to appear, you should already see that actually, if you go to SageMaker, now we can use the web interface to follow everything. Uh, and if you go to training and training jobs, this is um, something else I did today, but the one we want to look at right now is this job, okay? So it started, you know, like one minute ago, and um, uh, it's going to show uh, some metrics here once the job actually started. And what I was explaining earlier, you know, our little uh, val loss with the red X, it's going to show here. And it's going to be reported at a regular interval, which is, I think, a few minutes. So you'll have to wait a bit to see several points here and see a trend. Uh, yeah, so here it's, it's continuing to download the image. So let's just wait a bit for that. And I'll come back in a few minutes. And then we can see the results uh, on the web interface. Okay, so now the script is actually running. Um, we just waited a little while. And let's look at the log. Yeah, so we, we had to wait a while so that this all this downloading happens. And then it just started, you know, to show my, uh, to show some logs. Uh, it's giving, you know, as earlier, like the environment variables of SageMaker before showing the logs of my actual script. That's the log of my actual script, the model, testing the generator, and then the actual values of the loss during training. And that has been doing that for a while. And, um, you know, it's showing here. Uh, so I can have all the information of my job here. If I go, you know, again, training, training jobs, I select my job here, and the matrix should show here. You see, I have uh, the first point. Then if you wait a bit longer, I'm going to uh, show you a job that I just ran earlier, the same exact same thing, just in the previous run. It's going to accumulate here and you're going to see your validation loss go down, okay? And you're going to be able to monitor GPU utilization, CPU, memory, disk, whatever you want. You can also define as many metrics as you want here. If you just had here some, uh, you know, dictionaries, you can follow as many things as you want from your logs, okay? Uh, and important that this is done with CloudWatch, like that's what what's working underneath, and it's not going to be there forever. It's going to be there, I'm not sure for how long, but after a few months, this is going to be uh, deleted. So if you want that information saved somewhere, you have to make sure that you download it or change your settings. Um, Yes, that's about it. Another thing that's important is that if I decide to cancel my job here, you know, that's not running anymore, you think, oh, I'm done, that's good. But no, 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 it's still running on the cloud. So as long as you don't, you see in progress, I will refresh the page just to make sure that it will continue to run until your, um, your script, you know, came to an end. So if you want to cancel that job, you need to do it manually. You can do it here from the web interface and you have to click stop, okay? And that's going to change the status of the job. 
is going to switch to stopping. And um, yes, because if you don't, you're going to continue to be built for it. Okay. So now we can move on to the last stage of this tutorial, which is um, well, this I explained. So move on to the last stage of this tutorial. Uh, oh yeah, the, I didn't go through that. Retrieve data from S3. Here you have some example commands, you know, to, to download all your folder at once. You can do it manually, of course, with the web interface, but if you don't want to do that, just follow these commands. Uh, you need to have this recursive to download the full folders. Um, yes, that's, that should be, uh, you know, the easy way out. And the last part of that tutorial is hyperparameter tuning. And with SageMaker, you can take advantage, for example, Bayesian search, which is like faster than just grid search. So to do that, you need to do a few things. You need to use this ArcPass uh, library to set parameters, uh, to set like arguments to your Python script. Your Python script. Um, so you know, let's just go here. I will show you how to do that. I, I briefly mentioned that earlier when I was um, you know, kind of speaking about the code. So if I go here, Vim train, you see that I have these arguments here for the learning rate, the augmentation shift, the augmentation rotation. And I'm going to have those, you know, like going to call those later in my script. Uh, for example, here I'm, I'm doing that parameter back parser, and I'm using that in some sort of, uh, you know, dictionaries, doesn't really matter. But you need to have this as, you know, um, argument to your Python transcript. Okay, that's very important, your transcript. Then, once you have done that, you need to go to your uh, our run SageMaker script and so go to hyperparameter tuning. That's the main folder. So again, same as earlier, like the little train, this one is just empty, you know, just like the placeholder. I don't know why you need that here, but anyways. And then you need to do a few changes to the SageMaker script, which I'm going to review with you now. So let's close that uh, to avoid confusion. Um, so yes, this is your role as earlier. This is your estimator. Um, this is actually the same as earlier. Nothing's different here. What's going to be different is that uh, your metrics, you're not going to have this here, your metric, okay? You save that for later. First, you need to define your hyperparameter range and names. So here you see the LR, OG shift, OG rot, and it should match what you had in um, the, the, what you, the names you defined, uh, you know, with arc parse in your Python scripts, in your train scripts, okay? So you're going to define those here, that's the parameter you have to change, and um, you have to use this continuous parameter object that you get from the SageMaker.tuner uh, to define ranges that you want to explore, okay? And that's the start of the range, change, that's the end of the range, and so on. And this is a continuous parameter, you have different types, you have categorical, you need to just check the documentation, you know, say you make a tuner, you need to have all the information of that. Then you need to choose what metric you want to use uh, for your, you know, parameters, what, what function you want to minimize for your hyperparameter tuning job. And for us, it's going to be the val loss, so it's ex exactly as earlier, you know. And you use the regex, and exactly as we did earlier to follow a metric, uh, you need to have one for that, okay? Your objective type minimize, you know, so that you want to make it as small as possible. And the last part is going to be um, that you're going to create this tuner job, okay? This tuner job is a hyperparameter tuner. Again, you know, like we called that here from SageMaker.tuner. And um, you're going to pass your estimator. So that's the object we are playing with at the beginning that's defined here from like SageMaker estimator object. That's going to be the first argument. Then you give your metric name, which we defined here. That doesn't really matter what it is. 
should just match uh, basically this, you know. Um, and main metric definition, hyperparameter range that we defined here, objective type minimize, okay, you get it. And then max job, so it means like how many job at most you want to do for this optimi optimization job, you know, like you could add as much as you want to try to push your loss the lowest possible. It depends on how much money you want to spend on that, basically. And the last item is max parallel jobs, how many jobs do you want to run at the same time? So if you have nine jobs, basically like run three jobs, uh, if they take all the same time, which it should, it's going to run three jobs and three jobs and three jobs, okay? Uh, it's important because if you run all the jobs at the same time, you know, if you do Bayesian optimization, it's not, you, you won't be able to take at all advantage of the Bayesian optimization. So you, you want to be running as enough job at the same time so that, you know, you kind of parallelize your experimentation, but not too much in regard to a max number of jobs so that you're still taking advantage of the bias and optimization. So you have to find some sort of balance here, right? And uh, yeah, the rest is the same. Instead of calling the hyper uh, estimator.fit, you now call tuner.fit and you're good to go. So then you just need to do a, a Python run stage maker, which I'm not going to do here. It's going to do the same. And because this is, you know, I've, I've, com I've pre-computed that for you. And you need to go back to SageMaker, you know, uh, Amazon SageMaker, this page, which I was on already, but just want to show you. And here you are going to have a little training, um, the training menu. And before we were looking at training jobs, but now we look at hyperparameter training jobs. And here are some of the jobs I've done before. And this is exactly with our example. And you see, look, before I actually go into this, it's telling you like how many completed, how many total. See this, it, it failed before like, doing any job. Actually, this did nine out of nine. It's completed. It took an hour. And I can click here. It's going to give me all the details. And um, it's going to give me, if I want the best trained job, it's going to tell me what, what, like information about that job. Um, you know, what, what, uh, what were the best parameter that were found? Uh, what was the value of the loss? You should be able to find that somewhere. Okay, so if you click on training jobs, you're going to see the value of the loss here for each of the, like the minimum value reached for each of the uh, jobs here. So, you know, you could, you could look at it yourself, right? Uh, oh, the lowest seems to be, uh, uh, well, one of these three value, you know, one of these three jobs. And you can click on this job, have the details, you know, uh, it should tell you you know, like that was with those parameters that were cho chosen. And uh, yeah, so you can just, you know, do the analysis yourself afterwards. Uh, and that's it. Um, yeah, that's it for the hyperparameter tuning jobs. Um, the little tricky things that it's going to, you know, automatically launch the jobs here. So if you just stop one job, it's going to launch some afterwards. So you have to be careful about that. It's easy to, you know, kind of forget about it. If you want to stop it, it's a bit more, a bit more tricky. I think you should probably actually be able to, you know, stop it here instead of in the training jobs. But yeah, you can do a bit all you want. And yeah, I think that's it. That closes it for this uh, tutorial. Uh, we have seen, like to summarize, you know, like let me go back to the Gipet page. We have seen how to set up your own EC2 instance. We have seen how to um, install SageMaker, install AWS uh, CLI and set it up. We have seen how to install Docker, We've seen how to uh, you know extend official SageMaker, TensorFlow Docker, with, to create your own Docker's. Seen how to add your code to the container and then run that in local mode just to check that everything is is going as planned. You know, it's as it's much faster to start the job in local mode than in, on the, the cloud directly. You need to debug, I would advise that you first run local mode and then switch to the cloud. You just need to change a few things that Python scripts to, to run it on the cloud, okay? Um, and uh, then running in the cloud and finally retrieving your data in the cloud and last, you, this hyperparameter tuning job. That's an example of many of the things you can do with uh, SageMaker. 
And yes, that concludes it. So if you have any questions, you know, feel free to ask those in the comments or, you know, uh, contribute on the GitHub repository uh, in any way you want. Uh, I hope that this helps you um, and I wish you good luck with your machine learning projects. Thank you for your attention and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.